Wow. She is vicious with her language. Absolutely vicious. And also, where is the lie? Dove la bugia? Donde es la mentira? It's just straight facts. <laughs> exactly. I think I need this quote, like, tattooed on me or something. I don't know. It's incredible. Welcome to Electric Enthusiasm, the podcast where we celebrate unironic enthusiasm. Today is another classic episode of Electric Enthusiasm. <laughs> In which, true to our intro, I have absolutely no fork and idea what is about to happen. And I am Katie Cobalt. <laughs> that is awesome! Yes, I love that. It's perfect. Um, yeah, it's perfect. And I'm Alexander Kiyov, and I can count to three in Finnish. It goes, Uksi kaksi kolme. Congratulations! And that will become relevant in just a second. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how this works, Alex, ideally in Finnish. Yes, uh, that was that was the entirety of my Finnish. Um, <laughs> Finnish is apparently a very weird language. Are you finished with your Finnish? I'm in- entirely done with my Finnish. It's all finished now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's how the podcast works in English. In each episode, one of us presents a topic that they love, but that the other one knows little to nothing about. In this case, I got you. Um, <laughs> and then tries their damn best to spread that enthusiasm to the other host and to you, the listener sometimes we have guests on who are super excited about something that we know nothing about and then we have the moment of meta where we nerd out about enthusiasm itself and talk a little bit about why it matters and how you can live a more enthusiastic life yes because enthusiasm is important and you should share your enthusiasm with us on our website electricenthusiasm.com or our instagram at electric enthusiasm tell us what you're excited about these days you can even plain old send us an email at hello at electricenthusiasm.com. Excellent. Excellent. That's how it works. Today's topic is Tove Jensen. Cool. Cool. What do you know about Tove Jensen? Um, <laughs> um, I know that there's a pop star called Tove because she was a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race, but I don't think it's the same person. Nope. Different person, different Tove. Does this person wear a cake on their head? Uh, no cakes on their head that I know of. No. Cool. Then different person. <laughs> different person. Different over. So we like to start with the facts first here on the podcast. What do I need to know about Tova Janssen? Janssen? Yeah, Tova Janssen. Janssen. Uh, Tova Marika Janssen was a Finnish artist who lived from 1914 to 2001. Wow. Yeah. She uh, made it she... over the millennia. Good job. Exactly. Um, she is, of course, most famous for creating the Moomin Trolls. Oh, I do know those. They're everywhere in Hong Kong. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely fucking everywhere. <laughs> yes. What do you know about the Moomin Trolls? Um, they are a cute cartoon mm-hmm. that, like Hello Kitty and Miffy, are on every other lunchbox, notebook, and eraser in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And And, by the way, all over the world. Okay, that's everywhere. The <laughs> movements have become a global phenomenon. And Tove Jansson mm-hmm. was the creator of the movements, but she was so much more than that. She was also a writer, a very accomplished novelist, poet, a very good painter and illustrator, and an all-round badass. Yeah. Yeah. Excited to learn more about the badassery. That's yes, fun. exactly. So we're going to talk about her and how awesome she was because this lady was truly spectacular. So, Alex, why are we talking about Tove Jansson today? Yeah, so so like you, I knew of the existence of the Moomin Trolls, right? Yeah. I mean, I read some of the comic strips when I was a kid, but nothing really beyond that. Then, last year, I walked into a coffee shop in Copenhagen, and I noticed that the, the young woman behind the counter had a tattoo on her lower arm mm-hmm. with some characters I recognized from the Moomins. Yeah. And I was like, so... Cool tattoo. That's from the Moomins, right? Why do you have that? And then she talked about, you know, loving the Moomins, but more so about loving Tove Jansson, who was a super cool lady, anti-fascist, bisexual in a time when being homosexual in Finland was illegal. Um, and and again, all around badass. So like, I have to look into that. So I did. The Moomins are are awesome in in their own way, not just a kids' cartoon. There is some, there's some depth to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Tove Jensen herself is really, really interesting. And I researched it and I became super enthusiastic and I wanted to share that with you. What I like about this is there is a full-on chain of enthusiasm happening here. Right? 
I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. So she liked it. That became a tattoo. I saw that. And now I'm talking to you about it. Excellent. Yes. So I have five reasons why Tobi Jensen is awesome and worth being enthusiastic about. Want to hear him? Excellent. Yes. Yes. Reason number one was that she went her own way her entire life. She was born to artist parents. Her dad was a sculptor. Her mom was a painter. They met in art school in Paris in 1910. They moved back to Finland. She's born in 1914. And she basically grows up in their studio. That's cool. Yeah, right? This girl is going to be an artist. There's nothing you can do about it. Hmm. Um, she also saw something less positive in her parents' relationship was that her mom gave up her career as a painter to become a, like an illustrator because that paid the bills. Uh, her dad was a very good sculptor, didn't get that many commissions. So his income was very unreliable. So basically her mom gave up her artist career so that her dad could pursue his. That's going to shape her a lot in her later life. <laughs> I want to show you a picture of Tobi Jensen. Check this out. What do you think of this woman? I want to be her friend. Right. So cool. That haircut is gorgeous as well. Although she does look like she is smoking, which is less attractive. Yes. This is a beautiful room as well. Like the room looks like it's absolutely filled with layers upon layers of art. On top of like a giant painting, um, there is clearly sellotaped on top of it. (laughs) Like a little kid drawing. Uh, she's standing in front of a record player. Her arms across. Her outfit is impeccable. Mm-hmm. These are beautiful. Um, and she looks almost suspicious of why the camera is bothering to take a photo for this absolutely <laughs> necessary moment, honestly. Like, she has this aura around her of just someone who could not give a less of a fuck. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I think that's a theme for her entire life. Yeah. She's brought up by these artist parents. And of course, she has to go to art schools. And then she goes to Paris, obviously, like, where else are you going to go? Her parents went there. Yeah. Um, and she gets enrolled at the very prestigious École de Beaux-Arts. Cool. Yeah, and she hates it there. <laughs> it's very traditional. It's very yeah. conservative. Here's what she said about it. Beaux-Arts was a place for having fun or for hoping for the Prix de Rome. And possibly one glean from superficial technique to use in disguising one's mediocre talents. Janser transferred to a smaller atelier run by more radical Swiss artists who, learning of her defection, went quite pale at the thought of the terrible danger she had escaped from. (laughs) So I feel like that was real fucking shady (laughs) and I kind of love it. Like the superficial technique to disguise one's mediocre talents. Oh, that is a <laughs> burn. Slam. <laughs> yeah. So she could have gone like the traditional route and, you know, learned all of those techniques. And she's like, fuck that. I'm going to, yeah. uh, there, there's something better out there. She develops her own technique as sort of a finishing project. Um, she creates a portrait of her family. Take a look at it and tell me, how do you think this family's doing? <laughs> That looks like every fucking family ever. Um, (laughs) Nobody wants to be in this painting. There's two figures playing chess. There's an older woman smoking in the corner, staring aggressively judgmentally across the room. (laughs) That's her mom. Uh, I'm assuming it's her in the back with the coat and the gloves. In black, yeah. Looking like she is ready to leave as soon as possible. Uh Uh-huh. And then a poor, anxious-looking man in the corner who just really does not want to be there. Everyone in this painting looks like they do not want to be in this room with the other people in this room. Everyone's body posture is like small, trying to make themselves smaller and less conspicuous. Honestly, it looks like everyone's trying to avoid the wrath of the mother. Yeah, not a happy family at all. And that's also going to, of course, affect her later in life. Honestly, though, I feel like of all the family portraits I've seen in my life, I really like how realistic this one is. (laughs) Like, I feel like a lot of people have very complicated feelings about family. And I often Mm -hmm. feel like family portraits are like the facade where like everyone's smiling and like we're all together. Yay. And then everyone actually internally is just like, good Lord, kill me now. (laughs) Um, and what I like about this is that everyone in this painting looks like they're good Lord, kill me now. And I kind of vibe. I kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. I can see that. It's honest in a way. Right. Yeah. It yeah. Is. And I appreciate that. 
Yeah, I think that's a good example of, again, her going her own way instead of, you know, presenting a rosy picture of family. Mm. Um, she decided to do something else. And I can, I, can, I can admire that. It's one of those things, like, sometimes art just holds up a mirror to what it actually is like. Mm-hmm. Like, she's not glamorizing it. She's just like, no, no, this is, like, it's not painting. Maybe the scene never actually happened, but she's painting how it feels to be yeah. in that room. Yeah. Um, and in that way, it's really, it's very satisfying. I like this. Yes. So artistically, she went her own way, did her own thing. Uh, also in life, she did that. If you remember from our episode on Lisa Knuckle, the Danish writer. Mm-hmm. And by the way, uh, uh, Tobi Anton was born in 1914. Lisa Knuckle was born in 1917. They're very much contemporaries. Were they friends? Did they meet? Sadly, they were not. I've tried to find out if they ever met. And uh, <laughs> they must have known of each other's existence. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can find nothing to indicate they ever met. But Lisa Knuckle talked about the traditional role of marriage as a whole that mm-hmm. women can fall into. And she fell into it herself. Tove Jensen felt very much the same way. This is a fairly long quote, but it's very important. You'll see how she felt about marriage. I think I'm going to agree with this. It's going to be great. (laughs) Everything that makes me not want to get married came back to me. All the men I've seen through and despised. I see what will happen to my painting if I get married. Because when all is said and done, I have in me all of those inherited female instincts for solace admiration, submission, and self-sacrifice. Ooh, no, sorry. <laughs> I will become either a bad painter or a bad wife. And if I become a, in quotes, good wife, then his work will be more important than mine. My intellect will be subordinate to his. I shall bear him children, children to be killed in future wars. And at the same time, I shall see through it all and know that I acted against everything I believed in. Wow, she is vicious with her language. Absolutely vicious. I, I'm going to argue, I guess inherited, like the female instincts for solace, admiration, submission, and self-sacrifice annoys me, but also, also, like that's what happens when you're raised in the patriarchy. Exactly. It's like an inherited thing that's put upon you, and like it's gross to say out loud, but it is fucking true. Um. I think I need this quote, like, tattooed on me or something. I don't know. It's incredible. Yeah, right? It's And also, where is the lie? Dove la bugia? Donde es la mentira? It's just straight facts. <laughs> exactly. I, exactly. Yeah, that's incredible. I like her. She's she, great. <laughs> she's, all, she's already great. Um, there's more great stuff to come. So there's a parallel there to Lisa Knuckle, uh, the Danish writer, and there's also an interesting parallel to Astrid Lindgren, uh, the f- Swedish writer who created Pippi Longstockings. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know Pippi Longstockings was Swedish. There you go. There you go. Um, Learn something new every day. <laughs> there you go. And we may have to do a future episode on Astrid Lindgren and Pippi Longstockings as well, because uh, she was pretty awesome too. And here's the, here's the link uh, between the two is that uh, the second awesome thing about Tove Jensen is that she was violently anti-fascist. Mm. Um, so she looked at what Hitler was doing in Europe, and she looked at what Stalin was doing in the Soviet Union. It's like, okay, this, this sucks. This is bad. Um, and she was violently against that. And when she was 15, she got work as a satirical cartoonist for a, for a Finnish magazine called Garm. Yeah. And she created these uh, satirical drawings that were so vicious that they nearly got the owner of the magazine sued for insulting the head of a friendly state, in this case, Germany. I want to show you one, just to show you, first of all, how good she was at, at like 15. And secondly, also that, that this stuff was, you know, vicious is not an understatement. So here's, here's one. Can you describe what's going on in this? And we're, of course, we're going to put all these in the show notes uh, mm-hmm. so you can find them, dear listener, and see just how good this is. Um, there is Baby Hitler. Mm-hmm. crying yeah surrounded by various people and, oh my god the british person's wearing a top hat of that's course. like surrounded by impersonations and anthropomorphizations of different countries around the world offering him cake offering him the world and he's surrounded by half-eaten cakes and apples and bananas and he's crying about it and being an absolute little fucking diva whilst yeah. everyone around him looks so concerned and so worried except for the one person i'm assuming that's france already in surrender yeah, exactly. Very well spotted. In Swedish, right next to Adolf, it says, Mir kaka, more cake. 
uh, and Hitler is this little crybaby, you know, crying out for more cake. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, that that's that's fairly vicious uh, and also yeah. very well drawn. It's also very political for fifth. I mean, guess, I guess edgy fifteen year olds or have always been edgy fifteen year olds. Yeah, but like, it's very political. It's a very interesting interpretation of the political situation of the time. Yeah, I want to show you one more, uh, and this one is 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 kind of interesting. What's uh, going on in this one? It's a story of a thousand and one Hitlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see Hitler looting and stealing and setting the world on fire. Yeah. And loading up a moose with potatoes. Yeah, that's Finland, of course. With oh, a, yes, of with course. A, with not a moose, it's a reindeer. But uh, yeah, ah, my bad. yeah. Um, so yeah, so Hitler basically basically looting Europe, right? Yeah. If you look at the in the bottom right hand corner, there's uh, oh, there's, there's a moment. There you go. There's a teeny tiny moment next to her signature. That is adorable. Yeah, yeah. and that's how the movement started. Uh, they snuck their way into some of her early work, and into some of her satirical cartoons. Yeah. And then later on, she developed them into their own thing. Wow. That mm-hmm. is a choice. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's really cute little movement sneaking out behind the lettering, surrounded by an actual army of Hitlers. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it recontextualizes how I think about the movement. Yes. Because in my head, they're just that weird, cute cartoon thing that's on every fucking bit of stationery. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't ever think of them as being associated with radical feminism and politics and that's the thing there's more to the movements and we're also going to come to that um and this is also the parallel between toby jensen and astrid lindgren who created pippi longstockings again they were contemporaries and they were friends actually yeah uh, i have a picture of the two of them together i like it when people are friends yes and it's so adorable oh that is a great photo yeah right which one's tove uh she's on the right so she's snuggling up to astrid Aww. lindgren yeah it's a really nice little cuddle as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. I love it. Yeah. And Pippi Longstocking is also anti-fascist. She represents Astrid Lindgren's dream of a powerful person who does not abuse their power mm-hmm. and who also fights against bullies. There is a story where Pippi fights Adolf, the strong man, <laughs> and kicks the crap out of him and he ends up crawling away crying. So again, deeper layers to both of these kids' stories. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Yes. Reason number three why I think Anson is awesome is that she mm-hmm. was also a dancer. You are you are really checking off the list of things that Katie likes. And I know, right? You. Like, I feel like you know me really well. And so it's really <laughs> easy for you to get me into this. Like, I'm really excited about Toby Jensen right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, do I need a Moomin tattoo? Maybe I need a Moomin tattoo. Oh, my gosh. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. <laughs> but anyway, she danced and she had a good time. And she was part of the artist's scene in Helsinki until she got enough of that and moved to her own little island in the countryside and lived the rest of her life there. Okay. Again, going her own way. Can I, can I ask, when she moved to the countryside... So you said she was bisexual. Was it, was it with a woman? Uh, that's a good question. Because that is honestly, like, as part of someone in the LGBTQIA plus community, like, that's a lesbian cottagecore dream right there, is to move yeah. into the middle of fucking nowhere with your <laughs> girlfriend slash wife. Yeah. And then she, raise chickens. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, she did that with her, uh, with her longtime partner. That's the dream. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because um, now we're going to come to the fourth reason why Toby Anson is amazing, and that is the Moomins. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think the only way to start here is to find out which Moomin character you are. Uh, there are several... I didn't know they were characters. There are characters. Uh, so the central <laughs> character is the, uh, characters are the Moomin family. So there's Moomin Mama, Moomin Papa, and Moomin Troll, their son. And then mm-hmm. there's the, the Snork Maiden and her brother, the Snork, and there are the Hattie Fatners. Those are the ones I saw on the tattoo in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are these little ghost-like beings. So there's a whole host of of characters here. I think we need to find out which one you are. Please tell me there's a BuzzFeed quiz coming my way. Of course there is, Katie. Of course there is. (laughs) On Moomin.com, the official Moomin website, there is a which Moomin character are you quiz. So there are 10 questions. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, Katie, are you more practical or impractical? Practical. Practical. Uh, do you tend to choose rather carefully or somewhat impulsively? ADHD life <laughs> impulsively, baby. <laughs> would you rather have material things or experiences? Experiences. Of course you would. You are more guided by your head or your heart? Head. There you go. 
Would you rather stay at home or go on an adventure? Adventure! All the time. Come on. <laughs> Uh, this one is a no-brainer. Would you rather wear black and white or colorful clothes, Katie? I'm wearing a rainbow right there now. There you Please go. Please put down colorful. <laughs> Would you say that you are a warm-hearted person or a cold-headed person? Warm-hearted. Absolutely. Are you shy or outgoing? Yeah, I'm going to go in. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very shy. I don't at, like new people. Exactly. And at parties, are you sitting in a corner or are you the life of the... I'm just going to click life of the party. <laughs> 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 and final question. Would you rather be alone or together with others? Together with others. Together with others. There you go. You are Expert. you are the same as me. We are the yeah. same uh, movement character. You are little Mai. Little Mai. Little Mai. Little Mai. Little Mai is this uh this uh, little girl character uh who is always uh she's not causing trouble as such, but she always speaks her mind, says exactly what she wants. Uh, she's not as like a consensus seeking as the others. Here's how they describe her in the quiz. Your curiosity together with your fearless and cheeky attitude makes you an interesting person in the eyes of <laughs> others. You cheerfully state all the unpleasant truths that others don't want to say out loud or hear. You never suffer from a guilty conscience and small practical jokes greatly excite you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So basically, we're dickheads, but like lovable dickheads. <laughs> exactly, exactly, lovable dickheads. That's <laughs> that. That is us. I also did a quick Google image search to see what we look like. Mm -hmm. That little girl looks evil, and I'm too <laughs> for it. Yeah, but like lovably evil. Yeah, but it's definitely a thing. Like anytime, like there's one of these, like who, which character are you? Like which Harry Potter house are you? I'm like, which one is the evil one? That's the one I am. I'm, I'm a Slytherin. I'm a Zula. Like. Yeah, I am nope. the evil one. I have accepted this in my life. This is perfect. There, little Mai, it's you. It's so you. <laughs> as you saw, the movement started as, as these little scribbles in other work. Here's how she describes it in a letter to a friend. When I was feeling depressed and scared of the bombing and wanted to get away from my gloomy thoughts to something else entirely, I crept into an unbelievable world where everything was natural and benign and possible. It's really lovely. Yeah. Um, so these are, they, they are obviously kid stories, but there are mm. levels to them as well. And I think that's why they've become so popular. They've become hugely popular. She started by writing books. Then it became a comic strip that was actually syndicated in many newspapers around the world. Oh, wow. That was the first time she had an actual paying job in her life. Like steady, a steady gig was when she got <laughs> syndicated. Uh, she was yeah. very happy about that. I know the movements only from the comic strips. That's that's mm -hmm. the only my only uh, experience with them. There's also several plays. Uh, there were uh, several animes. Uh, one of them made in Japan uh, that made the movements hugely popular in the '90s. Yeah. I think that's where most people know the movements from is from those animes. Uh, there are two Moomin theme parks: one in Japan, one in Finland, and they even made a Moomin movie where some of the voices are Stellan Skarsgård, Alexander Skarsgård, and Mass Freakin' Mikkelsen. Those are names of people. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Stellan Skarsgård and Alexander Skarsgård are Swedish actors. Uh, you have not seen them in any. You've seen them in uh, Big Little Possibly. Lies, Alexander Skarsgård. Okay, they, they've been in a million things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mass Mikkelsen was in Hannibal. Uh, and, uh, yeah. No, not your thing. I know. Okay. Marshmallow. Uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Yeah. In addition to that, there is merch. There is so, yep. so much merch. Uh, yep. Yeah, exactly. And you've seen the the erasers and the coffee mugs and the plush toys and the notebooks, lunch boxes, L bento boxes. Lunch boxes are a big thing in uh, Asia where I'm yeah. from. Yeah. And my God, so many Moomin, so many Moomin lunch boxes. Yes, I'm going to Helsinki next week, and I just looked on Google Maps. There are four Moomin shops in Helsinki. <laughs> <laughs> that I could find. <laughs> nice. um, so why are the movements so popular? Here's a quote from Björn Sundmark, who's a professor of literature at the Malmo University. Solidarity, friendship, and family are the keys to the Moominverse. <laughs> if a fellow creature, even someone they don't know, knocks on the door of their house, they will welcome it, provide for it, maybe even make some furniture or build an extra room. It's a heightened sense of solidarity that blends seamlessly into friendlessness and friendship. No one is too odd or scary to not be tolerated. Even the grok, the cold, friendless, anti-moomin, is eventually thawed up. 
it is it sounds very like um kids fairy tale happy place to be where no matter who you are you're accepted and everyone is inherently like welcoming and lovely to all which is very very lovely i can see that that's deeply appealing yes it is absolutely hope punk yeah yes but there is a little more to it than that maybe here's another quote that shows another angle to it Ooh, i like this <laughs> moomin valley feels like an antithesis to capitalism says Atlas, a 19-year-old fan of the movements from Northland, New Zealand. There is no ruling class, no working class. Everyone is just drinking raspberry juice and vibing. <laughs> you don't have to work yourself to the grave to make strangers rich. That's a norm to us. But to the inhabitants of Moomin Valley, it's an unheard of concept that they would find horrifying. I also find it horrifying. Just- <laughs> Just for the record, Atlas. <laughs> I agree. Um, I agree. But yeah, I think, but to be fair, like, I think that is a, a really wonderful concept to us. Just like raspberry juice and vibes. That's the life. We don't want to have to make some random stranger rich. Yeah. Exactly. So the Moomin, I think especially the Moomin animes are more childish. Mm. Uh, if anybody wants to check out the Moomins, I would definitely sort of suggest the comic strips which yeah. I find have a little bit more of an adult theme to them. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, that's where I know them from. Cool. And uh, fifth and final reason, her love life. Here's a quote from her on that. <laughs> I always fell in love with a person. Sometimes that person was a man. Sometimes that person was a woman. But the most important thing was that I fell in love with that person. Yes. I like this. I like this a lot. I relate to this. Yes. Yes. And you have to remember the, the context. Uh, homosexuality mm. is illegal in Finland. It's not ex- socially acceptable at mm. all. She uh, falls in love with a woman in 1946, a Vivica Bandler, a theater director, and has a very, very intense but very brief affair with her. <laughs> Lesbian stereotypes. Lesbian stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not lesbian. <laughs> women who love women stereotypes. Yeah, Let's exactly. go. Let's go. <laughs> I think I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, here's what she said about that. And, 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 by the way, this affair lasted like a few weeks. Yep, yep, that's yep. on brand. Um, I've fallen madly in love with a woman, and it seems to me so absolutely natural and genuine. There's nothing problematic about it at all. These last few weeks have been like one long dance of rich adventure, tenderness, intensity, and expedition into new domains of great simplicity and beauty. Yep, she's a sapphic icon. I'm here for this. This is so amazing. (laughs) I love this. This is so cool. This is so, I'm so, where did she write this? I love that we have this writing, but where did it come from? It's so great. Yeah, she wrote a ton of letters and there's a book that collects a lot of those letters. I think I need this book. So, yeah, and specifically, these are from uh, letters to her friend Ava. Uh, yeah. That was the one person she was the most open with. Uh, and that's where these letters come from. Yeah. Wow. It's incredible. I love it. I love it so much. And yeah. I also feel like it's such a universal experience for women who love women to find these super intense, short bursts of like, holy crap, it's you. And then it's, man, what? And then it's, yeah. It's super cool. I love it. I love it. Love yeah. So her uh, affair with Vivica is intense but short, um, but they stay friends afterwards. Also a lesbian story. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, let's go hang out. I'm going to introduce my girlfriend to my best friend who's also my ex, and then we're going to hang out with her friend who's her ex. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I did not know that. This but yeah, yeah. so great. far, so true to form. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But she also honors that relationship, brief though it was, in the Moomins. Oh, really? Yeah, there are two characters. In in English, they're called Thingamy and Bob. <laughs> uh, and Thingamy and Bob, they're always together. Mm. They're always holding hands. They speak in a secret language that only they understand. I'm going to show you a picture. That is adorable. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. I also love the color coordination, like the hair and the shirt and the hair and the shirt. Like, it's cross position. Also, great color palette. Love the blue and the orange. It's a <laughs> yeah. Great color palette. And here's the thing. So their names in English are Thingami and Bob. However, in Swedish, their names are Tofslan and Vivslan. So Tofslan for Tove, Vivslan for Vivika. That's much cuter. Exactly. That's so much cuter. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> 
So that was her first really stormy love affair. And then in 1956, she met, um, should I make you say the Finnish name? Oh, I'm going to say it. I can't speak Finnish. It's a bad idea. Tuliki Pietile. They fall in love and they are together for the rest of Tova's life until yeah. she dies in 2001. They're together for 45 years and they live on that island. Nice. And there's a character in the Moomin celebrating her as well. <laughs> uh, the character is called Too Tiki. Um, Too Tiki. Can I see a photo? I want to see what it looks like. Here. So yeah, that was her, again, celebration of the love of her life. Tuliki mm. Pietile. I'm guessing I'm, I don't speak Finnish either. <laughs> <laughs> I think Danish is closer to Finnish than maybe you have like a little bit of a cheat code there. It's actually not. It's actually oh. not. No, uh, Finnish is a completely separate language from the other Scandinavian languages. There's like no overlap whatsoever. It's it's a deeply weird language. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. And a sad little addendum to this part of her life was that her the private life was often, you know, ignored toned down on the blurbs for her books. It might say, you know, Tove Jensson lives alone on an island in Finland mm, instead sucks. of, you know, lives with her longtime partner. Too. I mean, it's, is it, so question for you, what would be worse? She lives alone or she lives with her best friend or she lives with her roommate or her gal pal? <laughs> like, cause that was often done. Like if there was a lesbian couple in history, they were often only well, history, even today. Like there's still stories of lesbian couples even married women going to look at housing and they're like, oh, you guys best friends want to find a place together? That's so cute. Yeah. Or your cousins or your sisters. Like, That's true. What was worse? Like erasing the relationship or reducing it to like, oh, they're just roommates. That's a good question. What do you think is worse? I don't know. I feel like actually erasing is probably worse, which makes me really sad because at least if they were gal pals, like a smart reader can read through that and be like, yeah, yeah. they were roommates. Exactly. They were roommates. Yeah. All righty, Katie. That was the, the final reason why I think Tove Jensson is worth being enthusiastic about. What do you think? I love her. I'm really enthusiastic about her. I want to read the book of her letters. I'm more interested in her than I am in Moomin, if yes. that's allowed. Me too. Absolutely. Like, to me, she seems really cool. The anti-fascism, the vicious writing. Like, ooh, she seems like she's got a really sharp wit about her. And I'm super into that. I like her. Um, she is probably one of like the most stereotypical sapphic women I've heard of. <laughs> she kind of checked all the things off the list of, you know, intense love affair, but stayed friends. Mm -hmm. um, and like running off into the countryside with the love of your life. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. So gorgeous. We love to see it. Um, so as a sapphic icon, I love her. I worship this. This is so cool. Um, and I also want to see more of her art. Like I was really yes. taken by the family portrait. So yeah, she seems awesome. I'm, this is, I'm glad you made the episode about her and not about Moomin. Right. Yeah. The Moomins yeah. are cool, but not that cool. No. Yeah. The Moomins are fine. <laughs> They're, They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find a ton of her art online as well. All righty. Should we wrap this one up? Let's do it. Excellent. So dear listener, what do you think of uh, Tove Jensson or the Moomins? Which Moomin character are you? Are you Stinky or the Hattie Fatners or Snort or the Snort Maiden? We want to know who you are. Let us know in a comment on our website, electricenthusiasm.com or our Instagram at electricenthusiasm. Okay. Are you ready for some meta? Yes, meta me. Okay. So today's moment of meta is my encouragement for people to seek out adventure mm -hmm. and to seek out potentially new enthusiasms. We talked a little bit re previously about finding joy in your hobbies, finding joy and enthusiasm in your workplace. And I think these are great places to find joy and find enthusiasm. But I also think everywhere is an opportunity to find some enthusiasm. Uh -huh. So I wanted to share like a little bit of like a little bit from my childhood. So uh, my mom was really big on getting me to tell stories. After I came home from school, I'd always go to her office and I would have to sit down and tell her a story. And she'd always ask me a question like, what was interesting that happened today? It's like, tell me a story about today. And so throughout my day, I was always looking for that story, that thing that had a bit of funny thing in it or a bit of a twist. And I'd want to come home and tell her, well, today, this funny thing happened or this weird thing happened. And it meant that I sought out and I have continued to seek out weird things that might happen 
just because they're my I, I need to have stories to tell people like what happens if you meet someone you need to tell them some stories mm-hmm. um and it's led me to have this uh, enthusiasm for life because i will say yes to 99.9 percent of adventures because i'm convinced there's a good story there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so i would like to encourage everybody and i'm also going to set you some homework alex Mm-hmm. The next opportunity that comes your way that could make for a good story, I would like you to say yes to said adventure. Yeah. Potentially find a new enthusiasm and report back next moment of meta with a good story. Ooh, good one. Good one. Yes, absolutely. I love it. And also, uh, uh, whether you know it or not, fits in perfectly with the movements. <laughs> Didn't know that because I don't know shit about Moomins. <laughs> there you go. But that's basically every Moomin story is that they're living happily in Moomin Valley and then some external threat forces them to go on an adventure. Mm. Uh, and some of them are like, yes, adventure. Uh, Moomin Papa uh, is very much like that. Something mm. new is happening. How exciting. It must be good. And some of them are more hesitant and they're like, oh, no, can we just stay here? And then, of course, this being Hope Punk, it all turns out fine in the end. <laughs> But I often find if you go into the adventure with the mindset of this is going to be hilarious, this is going to be a great story, this is going to be great. Like, even if something goes wrong, your attitude will help make it okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that makes a really big difference. If you go into the thing with like the positive of like, I'm doing it for the story, I'm doing it for the adventure, let's go, what's going to happen? You're often going to have a more positive experience, even if the experience is negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and even like if you end up going to a terrible play, that's a good story. That is, and they get to complain about a terrible play. That's always fun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's great advice. That's, that's great enthusiasm advice. And uh, mm-hmm. I will definitely try that. Next time somebody suggests something, the answer will be yes. Have some adventures. Tell me a story. Love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Whee! Cool. For our roundup from previous episodes, as we mentioned in the last episode, we put up a call to action for you, our listeners, to suggest our 10th enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. And uh, our good friend of the podcast, Antoine, hi, Antoine, lovely to hear from you, uh, commented on our Instagram post saying that number 10 should be to subscribe to the podcast Electric <laughs> Enthusiasm. <laughs> I mean, doy, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at it. It feels really, really self-aggrandizing. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just mad that I didn't come up with it. Honestly, that I did not think of that. Yeah. The 10th enthusiasm, thou shalt subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> I mean, I think we all have imposter syndrome. I should know. But when it comes to promoting the podcast, I am not nearly as good at it as you are. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly because like it feels like it feels like a really big part of me, like this part of my personality, this part of my world. And it feels almost very vulnerable to tell people to listen to the podcast because I'm like, this is a big part of who I am. And if you don't like it, then that means you don't like me. And yeah, that's yeah. terrifying. I can see that. I can see that. On the other hand, here's how I think about it. This podcast is so awesome that it is. telling people about it, it, you know, it's just depriving them of such a great experience. But uh, yes, uh, I think we we have found our tenth enthusiasm, haven't we? I, so I think I think so. To the podcast, yeah, yeah. I love it. Thank you, Antoine, for that. That's fabulous. Fantastic. So, Alex, if someone liked this episode, which episode of Electric Enthusiasm would you recommend for them next? I'm going to send them to Lisa Nagel. Uh, Damn it, I was going to say that. <laughs> ah, I <beat> you to it. <laughs> we mentioned her. She's amazing. Contemporary of Toby Enson. Amazing and awesome and badass in many of the same ways. Also a writer who changed the world for the better. Um, and, and absolutely worth knowing about. And somebody who fought for good values and democracy and mm-hmm. openness and feminism and, and all the good stuff. So definitely, definitely check out Lisa Nagel. Yep. That was, I think that's the number one recommendation. Yeah. Also thinking about sending people to some of our other Hope Punk uh, episodes. That's a idea. Yeah, like Steven Universe. Uh... Steven Universe would go very well with Moomin. Right. Like the Wayfarer series, classic Hope Punk. Yeah. Uh, maybe even Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yeah. Uh, these possible... You know, every time we do these, I have to pull up our, our folder <laughs> so I can look at all the titles of all the folders because I forget what we've done. This is episode number, where are we at? 40. This is our 40th 40, episode. 40th episode. That's crazy. crazy. That is crazy. 
I remember suggesting the idea to you, and were like, "Let's see, let's do six episodes and see if we have more ideas <laughs> after that." <laughs> Forty episodes later. Yeah, and still not running dry. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So those that I mean, the the whole hope punk. We have a lot of hope punk. The world can face a terrible threat from the outside, but it's ultimately all, all going to be okay because we love and support each other, yeah. and we're all friends here, in Moomin Valley. <laughs> All righty, dear listener, what do you think about uh, Tove Jensen or the Moomins? Do you have any questions or did we leave out something awesome about these two topics? Go to our website or Instagram at Electric Enthusiasm and leave us a comment. And now, dear listener, go drink some raspberry juice and just vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Atlas from New Zealand. Yes.